Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is ExpressJS full tutorial series and today we are going to talk about a live project architecture. As I promised you, in this series we'll be building a real-time application backend system, the API layer for a real-time application and this is the starting of it where we'll discuss about the architecture and how do we go about building the backend API layer. Let's get started. This is part 18 of the ExpressJS full tutorial playlist. Make sure that you have seen all the previous videos so that you have continuity in your learning. All right, so today is uh, the day where we learn about the live project architecture and I'll explain you the blueprint of the application that we will build and use. In the coming days, we will learn about the ExpressJS with MongoDB. We'll do CRUD operations, uh, post, get, put, delete. Along with that, we'll also learn how to do with MySQL. Right? So that's another thing that I'll cover, but stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications. And also, if you like the videos, please do hit the like button. All right. So before I go into the live, uh, I'll request you to take some time out and read about the MongoDB because that's the backend system we'll be using in this particular uh, next few episodes where we build the CRUD op operations and do the uh, HTTP APIs. So you need the MongoDB knowledge. So I have created a playlist earlier. Um, if you get time, please do read through it. It will definitely help you master the main stack. All right, so let's talk about the live project architecture that we'll use, right? So we'll be building um, uh, endpoints for simple CRM application, right? That's our end goal uh, that I'm building along with Angular 10 series. So make sure that you check out that series also so you know how to connect both. Um, so how do we model our application, right? How do we build our backend, right? So the best is to start with Express Generator, right? It will give you a basic structure, right? So if you are following this particular series, you would see that we have already used uh, Express Generator to generate the basic skeleton, basic structure, uh, and now we will use it to enhance it, right? So make sure that you have checked it out. I'll just reference it to you one more time. Uh, if you see episode number 13, that's where we did the Express Generator. So make sure that you see that because that is what we are doing, going to extend it here. That being said, uh, I'm assuming that you have got your Express JS generator, uh, which looks something like this. You'll have a bin, node modules, public, routes, views, right? Now we are going to enhance this structure and make it like a real time project, right? So what happens is in real time projects, you will always have something called config you will need a config where you have all the configs, right? Environment specific, like dev, QA, all that, right? So that is one thing. And then if you see um, this route, so what I'm going to do in the config, I'm going to say config.dev.js and I'm going to add config.qa.js Yes. Again, you again, these are naming that you can use. Some people also like to use hyphen right that's a simple way also to refer that's totally fine whichever you prefer i would prefer hyphen so i'm using that right then you would say uat.js and finally you would have config hyphen prod dot j this is production so i got i've got dev i've got qa i've got uat staging i've got prod so these are all my configs right and the next thing that we'll need is the most important which is controllers right what is controllers right so you see if you are again I'm, I'm going back to the reference because this is all connected friends so make sure that you are uh, going through each one of it so if you see we have seen here middleware I have shown you how to write um, routing how to use dynamic routes URL building and middleware right so I've shown you that you do not write them directly into routes right so that's why we created this orders right and I showed you that it would create mess if you have so many routes in one place. So what you do is instead you create the routes here and you map them into controllers. Right? Let me explain it with example. So I have a orders.js. So here I will have something called orders, same name, ctrl.js. So this means all these orders will be routed to this main controller. This is where you will write the logic we will write the logic okay for orders 
here we will not write the logic we will just we will just have the routes defined right so we will import that um, we will say require uh, order control and then link them to the method so it's like that right we will we'll do that in the coming episodes for now let me quickly create users control now some people write in some applications you will see example like this users controller dot js right in some applications if they are modern they would just write c and ctrl um, so whichever you way you write it doesn't matter it's just a name for your reference for your easy thing i'm just writing entirely so you got orders you got users the same is here similarly i'm going to say index controller dot js routes will be defined here the logical methods will be inside the controllers right that's for the routes config controller and then we will also need something very very important called middleware right now what is middleware right so here i'm going to define and say uh, in it in it um, or i would say bootstrap dot js right what this is is this is very very important file important file why um, again i will reference it back to whatever we have learned so so friends you see that i am relating it to the previous episodes the reason being that we are going to bring our, all our learning all our knowledge into usage right so we are going to practically implement what we have learned so if you see in the episode number 12 we learned about middleware right so make sure you check that out because now we are going to implement it live and you will know why so for example some of the use cases for middleware middleware are let's say very very important uh, these are the extreme this is how real time applications are done now on trim the incoming data right you want to trim the data for security you want to implement authentication token right you want to do security check and you want to do security check you want to do user access check and all those that we will do so that's where your middleware comes into really really picture right so make sure that you get that uh, very very clear also if you see we will need common services right why do we need services now let's say i'm going to uh, in our case i'm going to say order orders service dot js right now in the controllers i can i have orders controller now i'm going to say in the routes i'm going to define one more route and i'm this i'm going to say orders admin dot js right so this is for the order uh, say orders or i here i'll say order management right so this is i'm saying order order manage orders management now in the controller i'm going to define a controller for that again orders management dot hyphen controller dot js right now i have the orders controller i have orders management controller if you see here in the service now this will this will kind of serve both orders orders dot j orders controller dot js and it would also serve orders hyphen management management controller dot js so basically what service will do is it will serve the related controllers right or functionality so in this case which is orders controller and orders management controller so that's why we need services so that's where we'll keep all our services all right and last but not less the least uh, we'll have a definitely we will write some tests using zest or mocha so that's where we'll have a test for to cover all the testing also if you want to do something like uh, bad jobs right so you also need something called cron jobs now these are nothing but bad jobs right now what are bad jobs uh, like for example you want to reset some data at every day every day midnight right that's something that you want to do you want to do backup 
or you want to you want to dump data into some other external system right so these are the cron jobs or bad jobs which will run in the background right and the last thing that I have seen in my working career is integrations now what these integrations do is oh sorry so what these integrations do is let's say you want to implement with some third party right um, so you let's say you want to do something let's say with Google OAuth right OAuth um, dot JS so here you will write all your integrations or you can say let's say iCal dot JS if you want to incorporate with Apple Calendar you would do that OAuth is for authentication um, let's say you want to integrate something with let's say Dropbox dot JS <coughs> right so all your third party integration code will be in the integrations so this is how any real-time application project would look like I'm not saying this is the standard I'm saying this is the standard I have seen in my working career in large applications right so this architecture if you see will serve will serve at least um, close to um, 85 to 90 percent right um, requirements for your thing right again each project each project is unique and each project has its own use cases but this is the uh, common I would say close to the common structure that you would see right so we will use this structure for our live application that we are building I want you to learn how it's done how it's done in real time come as close as to being a real time project right I hope you learn from it I hope uh, uh, you're looking forward for it because I am so looking forward for it and I think um, what we will start doing is the MongoDB CRUD operations starting next episode um, for building our live application I'm really excited uh, about this I hope you too are if you are please let me know in the comment section and I look forward to for you to joining me in the next episode thank you so much for joining do let me know your comments feedback and don't forget to subscribe to my channel let's build this beautiful application together thank you so much